Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Now, <laughs> you've got to hit the like and the share button. I'm telling you this now. I don't care about the hate. I don't care if you unsubscribe. I don't care if you want to call this the United, the, 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 the Arsenal Terrace, a fake United fan. I couldn't give a damn. This isn't about Arsenal per se. But I do have to say, the referees, the PGMOL, the media, they do make it hard not to throw out the accusations that they despise and hate Arsenal. At the very least, the inconsistency from them is unbelievable. No wonder the referees, no wonder so many of the decisions are inconsistent. Take a look. Take a look at this. Two videos here. Partly what Dermot Gallagher said about Declan Rice's red card. Take a little listen. This is fascinating. You could hear what Arsenal fans uh, made a referee. Now, we went through this yesterday, but it's important to listen to it again. Very, very important to listen to it. Chris Kavanagh's decision to show Rice a second yellow card for delaying a restart just there. Uh, what we want to know, Dermot, did he deserve it? Well, they were told at the start of the season, I think the briefing was quite clear that if you do this, if you make this action, delaying the restart, you run the risk. I say you run the risk because I think you're aware that you think somebody else should have got a yellow card, but that doesn't exonerate what he did. I think two things didn't help him. If you look, he knows what he's doing. And secondly, the touchline. And I say the touchline because, because he knocks it, people say, I didn't knock it very far, but he actually knocks it off the field. So he definitely can't restart play. So referee Chris cavan has got nowhere to go, really. He'd had a yellow card for a lunging tackle in the first half. Second yellow card, mandatory. Gets sent off. OK. Um, is there... So we, we heard the explanation. He goes on in this clip to speak about how you know people want consistency, but you've got to go by the letter of the law, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is what he goes on to um, say. Now, that's fine. Hasn't mentioned Veltman kicking him. Says the player flicked the ball away, deserve yellow card. That is what should happen. Now, when we talk about consistency, we're talking at all levels. The mainstream media's reaction to it, the questions, the challenge, what the referees themselves do, the way Howard Webb reacts. Again, this involves Arsenal, but it's a much bigger and wider problem. Take a listen to this part. It's a thing of beauty. Championship, shall we? Uh, this is Luton's Henry Lansbury. Right. I know it's blurred. I can't show the footage. All right. Just to bring this to life for you, I'm going to put a link to the, the full video. It's the exact same thing. Whoever the player is that, that flicks, that somebody looks at, flicks the ball away and gets booted by a player that went to take a quick free kick. Let's watch it again. Go to an extraordinary moment in the championship, shall we? Uh, this is Luton's Henry Lansbury. Bang. Yellow. Uh, <laughs> this challenge on Swansea's Ryan Manning. Right. Um, I, I think that the eyebrows Boom. raise over... You see that there? Yellow card, the player who kicked, who kicked out got when he was going to take a free kick. The word yellow. Could it have been a red? Should it have been a red? Could have, should have. You can use either word, can't you? I, I would. I just don't know why it's not a red card. I, I think everybody watching that would say that's a red card. You know, the player would say, "Well, I was going to try and kick the ball. It was our free kick." But you do that, you put boot as hard as that into somebody. I feel it's got to be a red card. So how can you watch this, Derm Dermot Gallagher, Sky Sports? The incidences are almost identical, one of which you're justifying a yellow card and you are not mentioning the kick of Veltman. You're not mentioning the veracity of it. You're not mentioning that he's booted Rice in the leg. The other way around, see, this is what I mean by consistency. If Dermot Gallagher was being consistent, he would have said, well, the Declan Rice may have flicked the ball away slightly, but that doesn't excuse the violent conduct from Veltman afterwards. Maybe Declan Rice gets a second yellow card because he does flick it away, but Veltman should receive a red. Or if he was consistent, he would say, it's not a red card. It's not a red card to Lansbury. In fact, it's not even a book into Lansbury. He would have kicked the ball. He went to take a quick free kick and whoever his opponent was flicked it away. He should be booked for delaying the restart. You know, it's it. The inconsistency is a madness. And I get there are some Arsenal fans angry at their team's performance at the weekend and they want to focus on that. Fine. 
You can do both at the same time. Human beings have the capacity to think about multiple scenarios from the same football match at the same time. All of them can be called out. But I believe Arsenal were robbed. They were robbed of a player on the football pitch and they were robbed of an even better opportunity to win the game. Yes, they had chances to win. But do you really think Brighton were getting back into that game realistically? Would they not have created even more chances had they had 11 men on the football pitch? Aside from that, the level of defending, and this is, this is the thing for me, I've called it out all week, and I stand by it, because this is going to happen to Liverpool in a week's time, then it'll happen to City, then it'll be Arsenal again, then it'll be Man United, then it'll be Spurs, then it'll be Chelsea. I'm going to be consistent. I want to see consistency from the referees, and I want to see consistency from these pundits. And the biggest element of this clip that annoys me is that Sky Sports don't challenge it. How was, how was anybody from Sky Sports standing there yesterday and not going, hang on though, Derm? Not a while back, you uh, decided that that should have been a red card to Lansbury for the exact same thing. Why is it different? At the very least, with that challenge, we all get educated. We broaden our horizons. We understand what's going on. And I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you hate Arsenal, or if you're an Arsenal fan and you hate Arteta and you don't like this team, then this is a great thing that happened. You get to laugh at Arsenal. You get to have a go at Arsenal fans that you don't like. But what you're doing is perpetuating the inconsistencies within the game. When it happens to your team next week or a team that you like, you'll probably come out and say it's a disgrace and you'll call them out. It doesn't excuse the misses from Kai Havertz. It doesn't excuse the problems in the game for Arsenal. And Arsenal fans will address it. But I completely concur with their anger that people are ignoring the conversation surrounding these inconsistencies. Aside from that, as I say, the last couple of years, the level of bias, one-sided, duplicitous punditry that we have seen towards Arsenal Football Club has been crazy. My reason for calling it out, I've mentioned it many, many times. I've seen this my whole life with Man United and continue to do so. And I just felt that I was at a point in my particular life where I wanted to Instead of, instead of acting like I'd done for the majority of my adolescence and my younger years, which was, well, if I see my team being mistreated, I'm going to perpetuate stories or mistreat other teams. I'm going to behave in the same way to create this weird sort of equilibrium. The older I've got, the more I realize that's just bad energy. There's like an expression we use. I'm sure it's used all over the world, but we use it here in England, which is like throwing bad money after good. And if that's how it sort of feels to me. It's almost like, well... I've got an opportunity to speak the truth. I've got an opportunity to have a, a real solid, productive conversation. Or I can just go, aha, Arsenal fans moaning. Get, get, you know, you're in the mud. You're always whinging. Deal with it. Hold that L. I could laugh at the duplicitous nature of it. I could laugh at the inconsistencies. I could stoop to that level. Or I can be honest and open about it. And for me, everything surrounding these decisions against Arsenal... And there's been a number of them in the last year or so. The Newcastle one, not getting the penalty at Villa. This particular incident, it has to be called out. Not because I'm backing Arsenal, but because I want more consistency. And I keep hearing people say, you can't get more consistent with subjectivity. You can. You absolutely can. Because delaying a restart is not really subjective, is it? <laughs> it's, it's very clear and obvious to see. It really, really is. But again, they talk out of both sides of their mouth depending upon which football team or which referee has made the mistake or basically what Howard Webb tells them to say. And there is a problem with that because I don't think there's a conspiracy. I don't think there is corruption. I don't. But I understand why people make the accusations because this stinks. Leave us your views and, and comments in, uh, below. Until next time, my people, take care, goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you soon. Peace.